Please don't forget to like this video and if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button, then click the bell and then click all. Every like and subscribe helps us make more great videos for you. This guide is a guide to tweaking Windows 10 to hopefully get it to run a little bit faster and also to get it to crash a little bit less frequently. Now you don't have to follow all the steps in this guide, each step is purely optional. So first of all, we're gonna start by clicking on the start button in the bottom left hand corner of the screen and then click on the settings cog just there on the start menu. This menu should now appear. And the first thing we want to do is just want to cut down on the number of notifications we get. So if you just click system and then when this menu appears, click on notifications and actions. And then on the right hand side here, what I normally do is I normally untick show notifications on the lock screen. I also untick show reminders and incoming VOIP calls on the lock screen. I leave allow notifications to play sounds, but I untick show me the Windows welcome experience after updates and occasionally when I sign in to highlight what's new and suggested. And also untick suggest ways I can finish setting up my device to get the most out of Windows. And lastly, I untick get tips and tricks and suggestions as you use Windows. Now you can also scroll down and if you've installed other apps on the uh, computer, then you might see under here, get notifications from these apps and you can select which ones you want to turn on or off. I don't have any listed there, but that again is entirely optional. If we click back on the home button just up there to go back to the home screen of Windows settings, then the next thing we want to do is we want to go to personalization just there. Left click personalization. And then we need to click on colors just here. And what we want to do is we want to turn off transparency effects. So let's just click that to turn that off there. And then we click on lock screen just on the left. And then we want to change the background of the lock screen from Windows Spotlight to picture, simply because Microsoft every so often uploads a new picture to us. It looks nice, but it obviously uses the internet and a bit of processing power to change that picture. So if we scroll down, we want to turn off get fun facts, tips and more from Windows and Cortana on your lock screen. So let's just turn that off. And anything that's in these boxes here, we want to get rid of those as well. So let's just click on that and we just select none from the top. So click on that one, scroll up, select none, click on that one there, scroll up, select none, click on that one there, scroll up, select none. So basically we want just pluses in all of these boxes. And then there we need to turn off show lock screen background picture on the sign in screen. Again, takes a bit of processing power to show that whilst we're logging in. So we just go to the start button just here, just on the uh, settings panel and we want to turn off show suggestions occasionally in start. So let's just turn that off there. Then the next thing we want to do is click on the cross just up there in the top right hand corner of the screen. And we want to click on the start button again and just type control. And after a little while under best match control panel will appear. Left click on control panel and then you'll get this screen appear. Now make sure view by is shown as large items. So if it's shown by category or small icons, then just click on the little drop down there and click large icons. Okay, and then we need to scroll down to system and then we need to click the right mouse button. That's the button on the right hand side of the mouse, not the left. And then we get this little sub menu appear. Then move your mouse over open and click the left or the right mouse button, really doesn't matter which one. Then we want to go to advanced system settings, click on that, and then we want to go to advanced just there, and then click on settings just there in the performance box. And what we want to do here is we want to take out the ticks just to the left of animate controls and elements inside Windows. Also take the tick out of animate windows when minimizing and maximizing. Take the tick out of animations in the taskbar. Take the tick out of enable peak and take the tick out of these three fades here. 
and then take the tick out of slide open combo boxes. And this is optional really, show windows contents whilst dragging. I don't think that makes a difference, but I just take it out. Lastly on this screen, we wanna take out the tick next to smooth scroll list boxes. So once you've taken out all those ticks, move your mouse over apply, left click once, and then move your mouse over OK, left click once. Then move your mouse over this OK here, left click once. Then move your mouse over the arrow just up there in the top left hand corner of the screen. Again, left click once. And then we wanna scroll down and find sound. So click on sound just there, and then click on sounds just up there in the tab there. And then what we wanna do is, first of all, if there's a tick in the box just to the left of play window startup sound, untick that box there. And then we want to scroll down and keep scrolling down until we get to this section just here, which says system notification. Once we see that, if there's a little speaker beside system notification, click on this and then click on this drop down just down here, scroll up to the top and select none. And that removes like the clicking sound that you get whenever you double click or, or left click on something. Again, that can hold things up. And also the play window startup sound completely unnecessary because, uh, well, it just gives you a nice little sound at startup, but it takes a little while to play that sound. Then we just click apply and then click OK. Then we can click on the cross just up there in the top right hand corner of the all control panel items box to get rid of it and then if we just click on this little arrow just there and just see if you've got a cloud there perhaps a cloud with a cross through it uh, move your mouse over it and if it's OneDrive and it's saying not signed in and you know you don't use OneDrive then what you can do is you can click move your mouse over the cloud click the right mouse button now it might take a little while but then you'll get this box appear here. And move your mouse over settings, left click once on settings, move your mouse over the settings tab just up there, left click once, and take the tick out of start OneDrive automatically when I sign into Windows. So take that tick out there and then click OK. So the next things we can do is we can get rid of some of these here. So where it's got type here to search, if you never use that and you never use this or this button, then just move your mouse over any one of the icons, click the right mouse button, that's the button on the right hand side of the mouse, and go up to search and then click hidden. And that gets rid of the search bar there. Move your mouse over one of these two icons here, click the right mouse button again, and then take the tick out of show Cortana button, and there you go, the circle disappears, and then we wanna get rid of the task view button. So move your mouse over that, click the right mouse button, and then click on show task view button if there's a tick beside it. And there you go, that gets rid of that too. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna stop Windows sending so much information back to their servers about what we're doing. So click on the start button in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, then click on the cog, just there and then when this appears what we want to do is we want to scroll down to privacy just there click the left mouse button over privacy then we move our mouse over diagnostics and feedback and make sure required diagnostic data is selected there scroll down and turn off tailored experiences and turn off view diagnostic data and under feedback frequency click on the drop down there and then select never. And that will stop Windows from asking for your feedback. If we click back to general there, then what I would say is turn off, let apps use advertising IDs to make ads more interesting to you based on your app activity. And again, allow websites to provide locally relevant content by accessing my language list. You can turn that off as well. And it says allow Windows to track app launches to improve start and search results. Well, this you could probably leave on because you might need that at some point when you click on the start button and you wanna search for something. And you can turn off show me suggested content in the settings app. Again, you don't have to turn this off, but I, I will do. Okay, let's go down to speech. If you're not using Cortana, then you can turn off online speech recognition. If you go down to inking and typing personalization, and again, if you're not using like a pen to recognize your handwriting, you can turn this off 
as well. And then we can go down to location and just click location there and just make sure that location for this device is off. Then we just click on the cross just up there in the top right hand corner of the screen. Now, you can go further with turning off data that's sent to Microsoft, but this can be quite complicated to do. It does require you to go into the registry and that's not really what this guide's about. It's more about simplicity than anything else. I may do another video showing you that at another date. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to try and uninstall some of the apps that we don't use on uh, Windows 10. All we do is we just open our browser. Now I'm gonna open Microsoft Edge. And once Edge is open, if we just click in the address bar right at the top of the screen, not the search bar in the middle, but the address bar right at the top, and then we just type ccleaner.com forward slash ccleaner forward slash builds. So that's ccleaner.com forward slash ccleaner forward slash builds, then press enter or return on your keyboard. It will now take you to this page. So we just scroll down and we wanna find C Cleaner Portable. So move your mouse over download, left click once, and it will start to download as you can see down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. But I know some versions of Edge now download in the top right hand corner of the screen. Okay, so once it's downloaded, then all we need to do is we just need to click on open file just there and we just click on extract just there and then click extract all and then click extract again. So this bit might take a few seconds, just be patient with it. And then we need to double left click on C Cleaner 64. If your system's a 32 bit system, then you can just double click on C Cleaner. Move your mouse over yes when you see this screen, left click once. Now CCleaner is usually used for cleaning up temporary files on your system, but we're gonna use it for something different today. We're gonna to use it to help us uninstall some apps that we couldn't ordinarily uninstall from Windows. So I'm just gonna click on tools just here, left click once, and click on uninstall just up here. So now it's given us a list of programs that we can remove. Anything we see in here that we don't use, we can remove. We're quite okay to, to remove this, but I'll give you a few suggestions. So I'm gonna uninstall 3D Viewer. I don't ever, I don't ever view anything in, in 3D, so I'm just gonna click uninstall just there, and then click okay, and that will, there you go, that's uninstalled. Um, I'm gonna, I don't use my computer as an alarm or a clock. So I'm gonna move my mouse over that, click uninstall and then click okay. App install is a good one to leave. I do use calculator, so I'm gonna leave that. I do have a camera, so I'm gonna leave the camera app on there. Like I say, those are entirely optional for you if you want to remove them or not. I'm gonna uninstall Cortana because I never use Cortana, so I'm just gonna click Cortana and click on uninstall and then click OK. I never use the feedback hub, so I'm gonna again click on feedback hub, click uninstall, click OK. Let's just go down a bit further. Again, I, these here might be handy to keep because you might use them at some point. Films and TV, get help, groove music, the HEIF image extensions, mail and calendar, some people use those, so uh, if, you, if, if you're not sure, then leave them. But uh, I never use Maps, so I'm gonna click on Maps and click Uninstall, and then OK. I never use Microsoft OneDrive, so I'm gonna click Uninstall there. So I never use Microsoft Pay, so I'm gonna click on Microsoft Pay and click on Uninstall, then click OK. I've never used the Solitaire, so I'm gonna click on that, click Uninstall, click OK. Uh, never use sticky notes, so I'm going to click on sticky notes, click uninstall, click OK. Uh, the mixed reality portal, never use that, I haven't got a set of uh, virtual reality headsets, so I'm going to click on that, click uninstall, click OK. Office there, I, I don't actually use Office, that's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, so I'm going to click uninstall on that, click OK. OneNote there is another part of Office, 
Um, so I'm gonna, I am gonna. don't really ever use OneNote, so I'm gonna click on uninstall there, click OK. Paint 3D, sometimes I use that, and people is sort of connected loosely to Mail and Calendar, so if you use Mail and Calendar, then leave people. Photos, that's a good little app for viewing your photos. Um, Skype, if you don't use Skype anymore, again, click on Skype, uninstall. Snip and Sketch is quite handy to have on the system, but again, if you don't use it, then, uh, then uninstall it. Store Experience Host, I think that's well worth keeping because you might need the Windows Store at some point to restore some of these apps if you do miss them or download other apps. Tips, I can get rid of that really. So I'll click on Tips, click Uninstall. I don't really want tips popping up all the time. Voice Recorder. I never use voice recorder on the computer, so I can click on that, click uninstall, click OK. The weather, I never really look at the weather. I just look outside the window. So click weather, click uninstall, click OK. These other ones here, VP9 extent, video extensions, web media extensions, and web app image extensions. It's probably a good idea to keep hold of those on the system on there. So um, Xbox, I've not got an Xbox, so, and I never really want to play Xbox games, so I'm just going to click on everything that says Xbox there, click uninstall, click OK. So I've gone through Xbox, Xbox Game Bar, click uninstall, click OK. The second Xbox Game Bar, I'm going to click uninstall, click OK. Xbox Game Speech Window, I'm going to click uninstall, click OK. The Xbox Identity Provider, going to click uninstall, click OK. Xbox Live, yep, going to click uninstall and click OK. And I never collect, uh, connect up my phone to the computer to view m messages or make calls on it. So I'm going to click on your phone and click uninstall and then click OK. And if there's anything else in there that you see that you think to yourself, yeah, I haven't used that in years and I'm never likely to use it again, then do the same. Just click on the program name, click uninstall and then click OK if it comes up. OK, so we're done with that now. So we can click on the cross just to the top right of the C Cleaner window to close that down. And we should be back to this Downloads window here. So I'm just going to click the word Downloads there. And I can basically, I can get rid of anything that says CC Setup. So I'm just going to click on CC Setup 580, just so it's highlighted just the once, and then I'm going to click on delete okay I'm going to click on that CC setup and then click on delete and that gets rid of that and then I can click on the cross on the downloads box there just to close that click on the cross on that downloads box there to get rid of that and I can close down the browser just there to get rid of that entirely optional again I can empty the recycle bin so if you want to empty the recycle bin just move your mouse over it click on the right mouse button and then left click empty recycle bin then click yes so there you go that is a great way of tweaking windows to try and make it run a little bit faster and hopefully crash a little bit less frequently than what it ordinarily does i tend to take the attitude the more things that you've got installed on the computer the slower it's going to run and the more things there are to simply go wrong so there you go, I hope this guide helps. And if you've got any other tweaks and suggestions, then feel free to put them in the comments below this video. Thank you very much for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at CWTech. That's at CWTech on Twitter. And don't forget to check out my other videos in my YouTube channel. Just Google Chris Waite YouTube. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for your support.